Time for episode two of the Just Name It season three challenges. Today we're looking at a CO2 emissions challenge. You are a climate scientist studying CO2 emissions. To make your research insights more accessible to your colleagues and then write a paper about it, you decide to build a report and name it component in NIME that allows users to check how emissions vary for different regions and sources. What are the most alarming insights illustrated in such a report? The dataset provided today is in .tail format, so we will have to read it with a table reader note. And the challenge asks for a report, so for me that points towards a NIME reporting extension, which makes it very easy to create PDF reports from dashboards. So that's what we're going to do today. Before we go through the workflow in depth, let's look at the final product. On the main workflow canvas, we just have three nodes. To start with, report template creator, which creates a template for our report. Then we have a component which is labeled dashboard and takes as input the port from the report template creator. And then out of that comes another reporting open port, which goes to a report PDF writer node, which can write the final PDF. Once we execute and open the views of the dashboard component, first we are presented with some selection widgets. There's a widget to select the year from, there's a widget to select a source from, and there's a widget that has all the possible countries in the data set pre-selected. There's also a refresh button so that once we change any of the input widgets values, we can click that and the data will refresh and the visuals will also refresh. The next section contains the first dashboards. It's an aggregate view which looks at the total CO2 emission data worldwide. First, we have a tree map which plots all the countries in the data set in a square and sizes them according to their overall consumption. And below that, we have two charts. One chart shows the growth of the different CO2 sources over the years, and the second one shows the development of the share of the total CO2 emissions by source over the years. The next section labeled Selection View shows details by region and country. We first can see which countries were selected and which year was selected. And after that, we start with a bump chart view that shows the top 10 countries for a selected CO2 source. Further down, we then again have the growth chart and the source chart, but just for the countries that were selected. If we go back up to the selection and change some of the countries, then we can refresh, and further down we will see the changes accordingly. Let's now go back to the main workflow canvas, and let's zoom in to that dashboard component. We start with a meta node for the data reading and a little bit of the preprocessing. First, we have a table reader node, which reads a .table file from the local workflow data area. We then send this to an unpivot node where we move all the CO2 value related columns, so all the sources, from columns to rows. Next is a column expression node just for the purpose of turning the year column, which contains the data type integer, into string. This is so we can later on use it for our widgets. The next node a group by node is exactly for that purpose. We define an aggregation for all the different columns that we want to choose from in our pickers, in our widgets, which is the year as a string, the country, and the column names, which now contains the labels of the different KPIs, like total CO2, CO2 per capita, cement, and so on and so forth and we use the set as an aggregation method to make sure that we only get the unique values for every column. We also take the last aggregation method for the year and the first aggregation method for column names 
as we want to use these as a default values in our pickers so that there will not be any errors if someone just executes a component. Lastly, we take the table row to variable node to turn all of these five columns containing the inputs into our pickers into variables. Next, after this data reading meta node, we have the user input section, where we have two single selection red widgets to select a year and the CO2 source, and a multiple selection widget to select the countries. And all of these take the variables from the data reading and extraction node as input. For the single selection widgets, we make sure that we select a default. And in the multiple selection widget, we actually pass all possible options in as a default value. That's why at the very beginning, during the solution walkthrough, you could see that all countries were initially selected. The last widget that we have is a refresh button that is used to trigger a refresh of the data when any selection has been changed. The thing a selection widget outputs a selection as a variable, whereas a multiple selection widget outputs a table. That's why after the multiple selection widget, we add a group by node to turn the selection into a set, and then we turn that again using the table row to variable node into a variable before collecting all the selections in the merge variables node so that we can use them for filtering later on. Now that the user selection is taken care of, we move on to the data processing for the aggregate view. We start with sending the data to a group by node and group by year, therefore removing all the different countries, as we just want to see the total. Next, we pass the data to a column expressions node in order to calculate the gross rates. In order to calculate the gross rates, we need to always access the value also from the previous year. In order to do that, we can enable Mikey row access in the column expressions node, which allows us to, in any given row, access a certain number of rows before or after. We've set it just to a window size of 1, which means we can go backwards and forwards from the current row by one row. And then we put in the gross formulas, which is current row minus previous row divided by previous row times 100. We do this for all the different KPIs. Next, we pass the data to a mass formula Mikey column node. This node allows us very simply to calculate the shares of the total for every year. In the configuration dialog under include, we only keep those columns that hold the CO2 source absolute values. In the expression part at the bottom, we then take the current column, so that's either cement, coal, flaring, gas, oil, or other, and divide it by the CO2 total and times it by 100, and then round it with a precision of two decimals. At the very bottom, make sure to select append selected columns with suffix, and we append the suffix share to each new column. Next is the row filter, which keeps all the rows except for the first one. The reason for this is that for the first one, there is no prior year value, and therefore we cannot calculate the gross rate. For all the others, we can. After that, we pass the data set to two column filter nodes, and this is just for the purpose of removing all the columns that we do not need for the different charts. So one column theater is to prepare the data set for visualization of the share values, and the other one is for the visualization of the gross values. That makes it easier later on to use the eCharts node and the AI assistant to create nice charts for us. Just below is the data processing for the selection view. In the first stream, 
we send the input data to a reference row theta, which allows us to theta out any data from countries that were not selected by the user. After that, we pass it to a row theta, which filters the data set for a selected CO2 source. After that, we send it to a group group start node, and we iterate over each dimly combination of CO2 source and year. Inside this loop, we first sort the data by the color values column descending, and after that, we send the data to a column expressions node and use the row index function to assign a rank to each of the countries for that selected COT source. We collect all the results in the loop end node before passing it to a row filter. This row filter is configured keep only rows where the rank is 10 or lower. This is to make sure that the final visualization in the rank chart is not too crowded. The bottom part of the selection view data processing replicates the steps used to generate the share and the gross charts in the aggregate view. The main difference is a that we send the data through a reference row filter first, though that we only keep those countries selected by the user, and b after performing all the other transformations explained earlier, we remove the first row for every country inside a group loop using the row filter again. With all the data pre-processing now done, it's time to send the data to our components for visualization. In total, there are three components. Each of these components has a blue square connection on the input side to the report template creator. Each component will be a single page in our final PDF report. There's one component for the aggregate view, there's one for the header of the selection view, and then there's one for all the charts of the selection view. Each component has a report output port, which we send to a report concatenate node in the right order that we want to see them printed as PDF later on. We then send the final report out of the component and in the main workflow to the report PDF writer. Let's now look into the aggregate view component as an example. You can see the different view components, which are either text view components for the header or generic e-charts views for all the different charts. The layout is chosen using the open layout editor button at the top and it is very important that in that open layout editor view you tick the box for enable reporting so that these can be used in the PDF writer. Checking that box also means that you get these blue square input boxes for the reports. Let's now take a final look at the top level view of our workflow. The final report is being passed to the report PDF writer. The report PDF writer is configured to save a file named report.pdf in the root folder of your Nine workspace. Saving it to the Nine workspace folder makes your workflow more portable and it saves you the hassle to make sure that certain folder structures are being created for users that may have downloaded your workflow from the Nime Hub or that you may have shared that with. And that is really all the magic to this challenge too and my solution. I hope you enjoyed and I see you next time.